Where's Johnny? That was terrifying. Hey guys, how's it going? I'm actually at the cabin right now, and I didn't get a chance to record voiceovers until now. So I'm going to record this one here in the car, because it's quieter. And next week I should be back in the shop, so we should be good there. Or not next week, but next video. I also have my screen in front of me here, so if I'm looking that way and not over here, that's why. Just a heads up, I'm going to kind of jump around this video a little bit. Because I start on one thing and then jump back to another thing and then everything's all kind of done at the same time. So I'll try my best to kind of keep it explained and straight. Over my last Christmas break, I decided to blow a hole through the guest room wall and build a front entry closet. Yes, we have this half wall closet type thing, but it kind of just leaves everything out in the open. And I think it makes more sense to have the day to day stuff out where you're going to use it versus having every single coat we own out on display. We're in Canada. We all have about six coats of varying thicknesses. To start this project off, I unleash my inner child and draw all over the walls, except with purpose. I'm marking out where the new walls will be installed. I tried to be a little bit more surgical in my approach in regards to removing the drywall, and I took a utility knife to the pencil line to allow the drywall to break there and not tear into the area that I wanted to keep. It turned out that I needed to take out that section anyway, but it was a good idea in theory. Then I let my wife let out some pent-up aggression and take the first few crowbar smacks at the wall. You good? You want to keep going, don't Should you? Should we be doing this cleaner? Well, now that we... Well, hold on. Because now that we have... Are you going to let me finish what I was saying, or are you just going to keep making a mess? <laughs> I actually just remembered that I do have like a six-pound sledgehammer that would have made this job a lot faster. Should have just used that. Cheaper than therapy, I guess. Once we had the hole started, it was easier just to break the drywall into chunks by hand, so that's what we did. Then in the best redneck fashion, I pulled the truck up onto the front lawn and throw all of the debris into the back to take to the dump. When we bought the house six years ago, we learned that there was a closet here that the previous owners removed when they installed the half wall closet. Now that we've removed the drywall here, I can see the original wall location. So I decided just to build off that as opposed to bringing it out to the location I originally measured out to. It means the closet will be slightly smaller than originally planned, but saves me having to pull out framing just to put it back. That being said, let's start on the framing. Starting with the short wall, I build this section on the floor and lift it into place and screw it into the adjacent wall and the floor making sure that it is square with the adjacent wall. And now that I know exactly where my walls are going to be and realizing I forgot to cut the carpet out, I mark out the carpet to be removed, take the new wall back down, cut out the carpet for the closet space, and cut out the carpet tack strips with the oscillating saw. I figured now was a good time to try and plan out my wiring alterations. If you haven't noticed, there seems to be a outlet square in the middle of what will be the closet door. So now with the floor cleared out, I decided to break into the floor with a plunge cut with the circular saw to remove the plywood subfloor, and then a jigsaw to get through the slat floor. I was happy to discover that this was in the middle of a joist bay and the electrical cable coming through the joist bay could be easily rerouted. Oh, perfect! Suffice it to say, I was really happy I didn't have to go through the basement ceiling to change this. More on that later. Oh man, I'm gonna have to cover this up because guaranteed f here is gonna go for a voyage in the floor. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't your cue. <laughs> to make sure I don't break my ankle in the joist bay, I just throw the plywood subfloor piece back in place and carry on with reinstalling the new wall. This time with a little spacer on top because removing the carpet and the underlay gave me a little bit more room and I didn't want to run to the store for another three two by fours to end up cutting too short. For the next section of wall, I decided to go with the stick build option and build the framing right in place, which I think actually went easier than if I had done it on the floor and stood it into place. Not having enough floor space to do that might have weighed in a little bit more on that decision. Having a plumb line drawn on the wall to work off of, I installed both the top and bottom plates and measured and cut the studs to length as needed and then toe nailed them into place at 16 inches on center. 
Now that the walls are up, it's time to get back to the electrical, since I need to reroute it to be able to progress. So I throw a 3 quarter inch auger bit into my drill and drill out the holes for the wire. Then after turning off the breaker to the room, I open up the outlet, take a picture of how it was connected so I can replicate it later, take everything apart and pull the cable back through the wall. To pull the other cable back through the floor, I sent a fish stick into the joist bay through the new short wall, taped the end of the cable to the end and pulled it back through the floor and into its new location. And since I'm done accessing the joist bay, I stitched the floor back together with the original pieces and some new backer strips. The last cable I needed to reroute was this one running into the ceiling. Same thing, auger bit through the studs to get it into the short wall. This cable is a bit short to get into the new outlet location and I really didn't feel like going into the attic to replace the entire length. So instead I put up a junction box with a new length of wire to get to the new outlet. Right now I just have the cables connected with some morettes and the junction boxes covered with a blank box cover. I might do some floating shelves along the adjacent wall in the future and if that is the case I might change this out to a outlet, but for the time being it's just a junction box. With the outlet reinstalled I can turn the breaker back on and with no explosion of sparks I can get going on the demolition again. At this point I was still trying to be surgical about the demolition, so with my reciprocating saw I cut out the lower portion of the studs and realizing that the closet door will need some sort of header, I just butted them up against the outer stud of the door opening since they were already cut more or less to the correct height. And with that done I also realized that the upper cable I just finished rerouting would be in the way of said header, so I gave up on surgical, took out half of the last bit of wall turned the breaker back off and pulled the cable back through, and then took out the last half of the wall. I didn't record building it, but I made a header out of 2x4s and some plywood. I'm sure it's a little bit undersized, but A, it's a closet door, it's not holding up the whole house, and B, if it can handle my 260 pound ass without sagging more than a sixteenth of an inch, I'm sure it's fine. Once I get the header screwed in, I cut some more 2x4s to length and screw them in above the header to allow for the 16-ish on center stud spacing and reroute the wire again. And with that, the electrical is done. And the framing too, I guess. Now it's time for drywall. Not too much to say about that, it's drywall. Keep it up off the floor about a half inch and screw it into the studs every foot or so. At least it's easy to cut. Cut through the paper on one side, bend the drywall along the cut, and it should snap nearly through the entire board. And then you just have to cut through the paper on the other side. On a side note, I don't know what this cat's issue is with the tape measure. Get don't. <laughs> gonna slice your mouth open because you're a psycho. Every time it's out. So, I don't like drywall or plaster. It's coarse and rough and irritating and it gets everywhere. And now that it's time for plaster, a good plaster applicator, I am not. My strategy is basically just to slap it on an excess and sand, sand down to flush where I need and then repeat as needed. Screw holes are easy enough, seams are a bit more of a pain. I prefer using the mesh tape to tape the seams. You can also get paper tape, but I've never been able to get paper tape to stay down properly. I always end up with bubbles that I end up having to cut out anyway. So mesh tape it is. For the outer corners I'm using a corner bead, which is basically just a paper backed length of angled metal that protects the corner from damage. I just pop it into place and plaster the shit out of it until it's level with the rest of the wall. With the first coat of plaster done, it's time to sand. Since this is basically in the center of my house and nearly impossible to close off, I decided to go with hand sanding to try and minimize the dust being kicked into the air, which lasted about 15 minutes. I quickly ran out to pick up this vac hand attachment which is basically a sanding block I can hook up to a shop vac, or in my case the central vac, and the dust is picked up as you sand. It's still hand sanding, but it's a lot nicer not having all of that dust in the air. And basically this process of plastering and sanding went for about three coats, at which point I called it good enough and figured it's time to move on to paint, which is another thing I really don't like doing. 
Luckily though, my mom does. And I got her to come and give me a hand with the painting, and before I got a chance to set the camera up, she'd already got the first couple coats of primer up. While she was working on painting the closet, I figured I would get started on trimming out the bedroom side of things. Again, not too much to say about this other than caulking and paint make me the trim carpenter I ain't. With the baseboards done, I move on to the crown molding where I figured I would give coping a try since I really didn't want to take down the existing molding to miter it. I marked out the profile on the piece with the scrap and cut out the piece with my coping saw. I really didn't want to ask too much of it. It's doing the best it can. Coping saw. Get it? It's funny. It's not great, but for the first time I did it, not too bad. And remember what I said about caulking and paint. With the trim done, I left the painting to mum. Then once it's dry, I can throw the outlet covers back on and call this portion of the project done for now. I am really happy with how this project turned out. This was one of the least stressful renovations that I've had yet. At this point, the bedroom side of things is pretty much done. I just have the closet to wrap up now. This is the first major renovation project I've done in a while now. The last one was ripping apart half my basement to fix a foundation crack and remove a bunch of mold. I will throw a link. Actually, yeah, it's up here. I'm not going to split this project into that much detail since renovations really all take the same process. I did do a few new things here that I didn't do in the previous one. So I will break those processes out into their own video. The next video in this series will be installing linoleum, which should be out in the next few weeks. Again, I will have a link to it up here if you're interested, once, it, once it's out. And with that, I'm going to call it a video. Thank you guys for watching, and if you like what I'm doing here, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more. If you have any questions or comments, I look forward to reading them in the comments section below. And if you want to see more up-to-date projects, you can always follow me on Instagram at John the Shriner. Otherwise, I hope to see you in the next video, and have a good one.